Coming up tonight on YCU News, find out which New Hampshire supermarket is closing. We'll hear from dog trainer Dee Ganley. And Claremont Police take steps to curb vandalism in the city. Stay tuned, it's time for YCU, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region and central Vermont. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that's happening in our area. The news on YCU, your local view. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for this Wednesday edition of YCU News. I am Ashley Perkins. The supermarket landscape in New Hampshire continues to evolve now that another New England chain says it will close underperforming stores. Massachusetts Stop and Shop will close its six stores in New Hampshire next month. Three gasoline stations operated by the chain also will close. Mid-September is the date cited for the closures. Stop and Shop's announcement follows similar news from Grocer Shaw's. Shaw's also will close six stores in New Hampshire, including one of two in West Lebanon locations. The Shaw's on Route 12A in Upper Valley Plaza will close at the end of August. Governor Maggie Hassan says state labor officials will work with both chains to help find workers new jobs. About 700 people will lose their jobs when these stores close. Claremont police say they want to work with public to keep vandalism down and public safety up. About 25 people heard Chief Alex Scott speak about causes of vandalism. Scott says data shows a downward trend in vandalism, yet he says three earlier incidents tell a different story. Seventy-five headstones were toppled at the West Pleasant Cemetery last month. This spring, vandals spray-painted buildings and sites throughout the city. Residents also expressed concern about noise and say closing the skate park off Washington Street is another park that Scott says might help resolve that issue. The extradition process continues to bring James R. Robarge back to New Hampshire from Vermont for arraignment on a charge of reckless second-degree murder. New Hampshire legal experts are still working on paperwork to compile Robarge to return to New Hampshire. He remains in jail in Springfield, Vermont, following his arrest on two unrelated vehicle motor charges in Bellows Falls, Vermont. Robarge refused to voluntarily return to New Hampshire to face the murder charge. He is charged by police with killing his wife Kelly on the same day that Kelly filed for divorce on June 27th. Officials believe on that day the couple fought. Kelly remains were found 10 days later in a field in Unity. Patients coming into the emergency room of Brattleboro Memorial Hospital will notice more space in the part of that hospital. The hospital is completing the first part of its $7.5 million expansion. The number of patients who are seen by doctors and nurses in the emergency room is more than twice it was once. Before the renovation, about 600,000 people went to the emergency room. Now 14,000 patients are seen a year. Restaurants on Washington Street are getting a new neighbor. Ramuto's is opening its second location in Claremont. This spot will feature ready-to-go meals for takeout. Ramuto's location on Broad Street will continue to offer sit-down service. The Broad Street restaurant opened in 2006. Hartford, Vermont, town leaders may have found a way to help town finances. That's because of an ordinance the select board has agreed to. Instead of traffic fines collected by the town going to the state, the money instead would remain in the town. The Valley News reports the money collected from traffic tickets given out to motorists speeding on four state highways would remain in Hartford. Retention of the traffic fines would go into effect in early October. That's about 60 days from a passage, a standard time frame. When YCU News returns, we'll hear from dog trader Dee Ganley. The YCU News continues in a moment. 